Hey, we've got Deb in the house. We got some more fun. Hey, Deb. Hi. I'm delighted to actually get on. <laughs> um, <laughs> my, I'm going to get right to the question so that I don't get to it. Jonathan, I want to know if I'm moving too fast. Okay. I'm, I'm living in Zimbabwe. I met a man on OKCupid okay two months ago. Okay. Um, had um, two chats on OKCupid, okay and then we had two emails, followed your advice, um, and then we had 70 hours of um, video chat. Okay. And okay. I, I'm getting on a plane and I'm coming to meet you. So I was in a state of shock. Within a few days, he arrived, 10,000 miles. He traveled to meet me. Where did he, by the way, where does he live again? He lives in Greenville, South Carolina. And you live in Zimbabwe. That's 10,000 miles, everybody. He came to meet me. So okay. um, I took your advice and didn't go for the tall, dark, handsome. Um, he is short. He's a little bit extra. Um, only uh, he was married once. He married his um, his his own with one woman in his whole life. Uh, okay. so, hey boy, I went for either. So he came out. We went to Victoria Falls, which is one of the seven wonders of the world. I took him there. Um, we had a fabulous time. Um, he met all of my family and all of my friends. He that was his mission. Went back to America. He's contacted my family in America and is spending Christmas with them. And um, uh, I'm I'm in a little bit of a state of shock because I've been single for 15 years. Yeah. And I've been preparing now. I know all this time because I've been following you all that time and seeing all metamorphosis. <laughs> and and I know that I'm ready. And I'm excited. So I got a couple questions for you, Deb. Yeah. Uh, first off, uh, earlier when you said I followed your advice, I didn't go for the tall, dark, and handsome person. Folks, I, that's not my advice, by the way, to not do something. I, I just want to be clear about that. And my advice is to go you know, where your heart is and not your ego is. Okay. So I just want to clarify that. So why don't you tell me, how do you feel? Okay. Did you guys have sex? Yes. Okay. Um, if if I caused offense by saying I didn't go. Oh no, no, you didn't cause offense. I just wanted everyone to be clear of what my advice is. So um so um well let's go back to you guys had sex. How was the sex? It was good. Okay. Um I but I wanted you to know that I actually he had very bad profile pictures, and I couldn't tell which one he was on the profile picture on OKCupid. Okay yeah. So I read his um, very, very long profile, and I decided to reach out to him because of his profile. I didn't know what he looked like, but he sounded emotionally mature, and um, he just ticked all my boxes. And I was not disappointed to find out Okay, so when did when did uh, he return home? He was only here for ten days, and um, since he's been home, we. Okay, have by the way, I want but Deb. I just want to give you an example of what women do. I asked yeah. you a question. You answered something completely different. I said, "When did he go home?" Uh, he went home three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Okay, so just I want to give everyone an example. Of, of communication, okay? I asked a specific question, you started to tell me a story. Okay, so he left three weeks ago. In the past three weeks, how has your communication been? Um, we video chat for uh, and between one and three hours every evening. Okay, so what is the game plan for the two of you going forward? Um, we are applying for my visa. And I'm planning to go for my birthday in April. Okay. And he has already asked me to marry him. Okay. So, well, uh, first off, you know, Deb, I know you from my group called Midlife Love Mastery, everybody. If you want to, uh, Deb is someone I know. This is new information to me because you haven't shared this in the group. Um, so I don't have 
so to the extent I don't have a lot of significant advice to share with you. I would invite you to watch a TV show called 90 Day Fiance. 90 okay. Day Fiance the other way, 90 Day Fiance. Why? Um, here's the thing. Relationships with people from other countries, now there's always exception to the rule, is you don't really know a person until you actually spend a significant amount of time with them in each other's respective environments, okay? Now, it That's sounds right. like you're you're considering moving to North Carolina, or you said North Carolina, correct? I'm, I'm going for um, between six and 12 weeks to okay. live with them at home. Okay. Um, I yeah, I earn my own business. So, so a lot of people in the 90 Day Fiance show do that, okay? They spend a significant time. Um, here's the challenge. When you move to another location, okay, so let's just say you're there. A, you don't have your, your circle of friends with you, number one. You're not in your regular routine, especially if you go to the gym, if you go to a per certain place to go for a walk, a certain, you know, all of the th things in your current environment aren't going to be at this environment, number one, okay? So what oftentimes happens, by the way, I'm not taking this from a pessimistic point of view, a realistic point of view, okay? What oftentimes happens is it puts 100% of the risk. Is he retired? No, no. He's okay. a software. So he okay, so he's work. going to work, and then you're going to be in his home by yourself for a significant amount of time throughout the day while he's doing his professional life. What off? Huh? He works from home. Okay, works from home. Okay. So, uh, and that could be a benefit. Well, that could be a benefit or it could be a curse too, because then there's no autonomy for each one of you to have your own space. Okay. So, um, the real question is, is doing, here's the thing. You can't really get to know a person until you've seen them in a multitude and a variety of circumstances or situations. This is how you get to know someone. All of that time on the telephone or video chatting is, is partially getting to know someone you're partially and quite frankly you're getting to know someone in a in a cerebral perspective and not the physical perspective and i don't mean sex okay how a person operates do they put the toilet seat down do they treat you with courtesy are you showing appreciation for one another all the little micro things that happen when you're day to day okay um if you guys survive the 12 weeks that you're together, and I use the word survive almost as a defeatist point of view, um, <laughs> certainly you can give it a go of it. You know, I mean, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Um, the question is, so long as you don't give up your sovereignty, because if it doesn't work out, what is your plan? Like I really, a lot of people don't go in with the plan of what, what to do when it doesn't work out. They're always focused on what does, you know, like the hope, versus the real preparation. So, um, hey, you know, I've known you for months now. I mean, this is new news. Thank you for sharing um, this. Uh, you must share this with the group um, so we all know. It's it's all happened so very fast. And that's why I'm saying to you, does this sound all too quick for you? Um, you know, it, he's doing eight dates with me. Um, we're doing that together. We're all um, he's, he's read your book, uh, self-love, <laughs> he's read the, the four agreements, um, okay. uh, he's read about 10 of your books, I mean, this guy. So, so let's, I want to address something, let me interrupt, you said, are we going too fast? Yeah. You know, time, well, I mean, from a spiritual perspective, time is an illusion, um, but I, I don't, I don't subscribe to fast or slow, okay? What I subscribe to is being in your own lane, okay? Being in your own sovereignty, your own power. And look at, many of you know, um, Marie and I moved in together rather quickly. It was five months after we met. Was that too fast? I don't know. All I know is I had an amazing experience. We weren't meant to go the distance and we, we left in a very conscious uncoupling. Like I, you know, if, I mean, 
I do. I, and I don't regret every second we were together because we were in appreciation with one another. We showed each other respect, you know, um, and, and each person is on their own individual journey. I'm okay. And my point in bringing this up is fast or slow. It's in, it's, it's a personal thing. What my most concern is, is don't give your power away Never do that. Because of the fantasy. That's the real issue. Don't give your power away to the idyllic, you know, the 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 fantasy of what might happen and be really mindful if you're taking red flags and painting them green. OK, which I talk about incessantly. So um, single one single show ever. Um, and one thing I do want to say is that um, you, you have just taught me not to hold out any attachment to the outcome. Yeah. And, and that helps hugely. You know, if it doesn't work out well, I'll be okay. I'll yeah. be fine. I love myself. And I know that, um, that I don't need the man. And he doesn't need me. We're both financially stable. As I said, I have my own business. Yeah. And um, even though he's met my kids and, and they really like him and all my family and all of my friends, um, I really believe that we will be friends if he meets someone else or it doesn't work for some reason or the other. But I do have family in the States and he's with my family. By the way, can I respond to that for a second? Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm going to say this tongue in cheek, but I love how we rationalize things. We'll be friends. Okay. Now let me be tongue in cheek here for a second. Okay. To me, a friend drives me to the airport. To me, a friend is people I get to break bread with. To me, a friend is someone I'm going to share emotional things with. Okay. Um, I think it's okay, but by the way, if you're if you're saying, well, they'll at least be a friend. The truth is, if you met the love of your life the day after you broke up, are you really going to be friends with this person? Okay, number one. Now, it's okay to say I'll be friendly to this person, but I don't believe it's healthy to share, to talk about your future dating experiences with a past lover. I think that's just an unhealthy thing to do to talk about your current dating situations with a past lover. I just think that's, it, it's, it's fraught with, and, and by the way, it's not clean. Okay. That's just my perception. I take that for what it's worth. Okay. So um, I, I think what's most important is if you recognize that if you, the two of you don't work out that you do it consciously, a conscious uncoupling, like what, um, what um, Catherine Woodward Thomas talks about in her book, Conscious Uncoupling, okay? Of course, I've um, read all of you. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just, rather than creating a story to kind of justify it, just simply say, you know what? Our, my goal is to go into this passionate and, passionate and open. And what I mean is open to the experience, detached to the outcome. Now, here's the problem. We can still get rather attached to another human being. It's, it's difficult not to get attached. And it's difficult not to get attached to the outcome. If you have a propensity in your past experience to be devastated, to be, you know, to feel heartbroken when something doesn't work out, then you probably are going too fast. Okay. If you have, if you haven't healed from something like that. Okay. Um, you know, but hey, listen, you know what? You're a grown woman. You know, we only live, well, in this lifetime, we only live once. So do what feels right for you, but maintain your sovereignty. Absolutely. And I appreciate your advice. I really do. I mean, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. Aww. I wouldn't be here at all. Well, you know what? I, I in, Into the one time that we did have a, a perspective coaching call. I'm here to say I'm happy for you. I'm excited. I wish you all the best. Let me give you a prayer as, uh, as I take on some more questions before we wrap up. Dear God, universe spirit, we invite in for Deb Locke, a juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship that starts with individual sovereignty and neither one of you giving your power away to the other person. 
And the communication and connection between the two of you is rather simple easy and the banter can go on for hours at a time. And, the, and if the two of you do experience a conflict, you're able to resolve the conflicts with ease and that your lifestyles are blendable with one another and you share the same passions doing things together. And you also share, share the same values that builds the deep roots of trust. Because when, when two people trust one another, they have the makings for a juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship. And I hope you guys have great sex together for many, 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 many years to come. Because guess what? What's the point of being with someone if you don't get to fuck them on a regular basis? At least that's my opinion anyway. God, universe, spirit, I invite that in for Deb right now. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you. And I'm going to let you know how that goes. <laughs> okay. Big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hugs. Thanks, Deb. <laughs>